It was a fairly normal Saturday morning baptism. A lot of family were present. Uh, kids were running everywhere. The little boy that got baptized was probably about a year and a half, and he seemed to do pretty well during the baptism. Afterwards, they took a lot of pictures because so many family were present. I was cleaning up and putting things away, and after the photos, they all left. Except there was still a little bit of noise out there. I thought, well, what's going on out in church? So I came out of the sacristy, and the little boy I just baptized was still there. Everybody else was gone. I thought, well, this is not good. I wonder how long it's going to take before they realize that the, the person of honor is missing at the party. Um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll try to comfort him, but he wanted no comfort from me because I was the guy who already had poured water all over his head. And so I just kept calling him by name, and he would run around the font away from me. So I go one side and he'd run the other way. Okay, let's go this way. He'd run that way. I think this is not working. And that I wonder how long it's going to be <laughs> before the family realizes well, I'll just make sure he doesn't get into any trouble. Just kind of keeping an eye on him because nope, didn't trust me at all. Finally, the parents came bursting in the side door, crying, <laughs> looking for him, and he's right here. And he was very happy to be in their arms and comforted, and then he could go off and be the guest of honor at the party. So it's always served as an image for me of, I, you know, I, I don't have a whole lot of experience uh, shepherding sheep, uh, but the whole uh, comfort that children take in the arms of their parents it has that same kind of image for me that children know their mother's voice, their father's voice. You know, you can pass a child around for a while. <laughs> Here at church, we see it happen on our regular basis, somebody gets passed around, but at a certain point, mm -mm, the only one that child wants is mom. And all these strangers who are very nice and taking care of the child, nope, only mom can comfort me at this point. And so they need to be held there. You hear all those stories from babysitters on a regular basis that they, mm -mm, screamed the whole time and then mom came home and psh, quiet Think, all right <laughs> there it is that has been good imagery for me over the years to pray about to to reflect on whether i have that comfort and that trust in god's arms do I trust Jesus that much that all my troubles, all of them, can be put aside? None of that other stuff matters because I know I'm safe in Jesus' arms. And if I cannot let go of something, then I have to ask myself, well, why? Why is this still bothering me? Why does this still trouble me if I'm truly in Jesus' arms? Nothing else should scare me. I think I've gotten better over the years to be able to trust that the Lord will take care of everything and that nothing else matters but being with him. That's all. I know when I was younger, I'd be nervous at certain times, <laughs> afraid to speak, wondering what people think. But that's all gone 
Perhaps that just comes with age. But I hope it comes because I trust the Lord. And whatever Jesus wants, Jesus will bring about. If he wants success, success will happen. If he wants failure, if this wasn't his plan, uh, it won't go anywhere. Or maybe he's just trying to toughen me up, that I'm going to learn something on this journey, but that he's with me. I'd encourage you to have that same kind of meditation. Just imagine yourself being in Jesus' arms, being held by him, and let everything else go. Like a small child, being held in his mother's arms. It's safe. It's okay. You hear your mother's voice, and there are no worries. You're safe there. We sang that Psalm 23 for our psalm today, which is kind of everybody's favorite. There's some translations that change the last phrase a little bit. Uh, Goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Some scholars would argue that pursue is a better translation than follow. That goodness and kindness pursue me. And I think, well, well, that's an interesting word, if that's truly what the original was, that goodness and kindness pursue me but it really fits what God does it fits what Jesus does is that Jesus is constantly after us only not after us in a bad way (laughs) that if Jesus catches you what catches you goodness kindness mercy that's what catches you Not something bad. As Jesus tells us in the gospel today, he's protecting us from the robbers, from the thieves, the ones who climb over and try to get in. But Jesus protects us from them. When Jesus pursues us, it's with goodness and kindness. And not just when we die. But here, that last line of the gospel, he came to bring us life and that we might have it more abundantly. That's right here, right here on earth. Yes, it will come later. We'll all get to meet God face to face someday. But that life he brings is right here and right now safe in his arms.